Hey everybody, Jake here and welcome to the hobby. We're doing an AMA today, which means you guys can ask me any questions you guys want. And boy, did you guys ask a lot of questions. You guys submitted over 500 questions to me. So we got a lot of questions to go over. I'm gonna try to answer as many questions as I can. We'll probably do more than one video just so that I can fit in even more questions. So first up, we have a wise man who asked, hey Jake, I'd be really interested to know what you would consider some of your worst Pokemon investments to be. No one can be right all the time. I'm definitely not right even half the time. So what are some of my worst Pokemon card investments? Uh, outside of some of the obvious ones, which were cards that I bought that turned out to be fake and cards that I bought that I thought were in better conditions than they were. Some of my worst investments, and I think this one is actually a pretty good lesson, is cars that I thought would be really valuable down the line simply because they were very rare. There weren't a lot of them out there and I'm really missing half of it. The other half is demand. It doesn't matter how rare a card is if no one cares about it. It's fantastic that you might have a PSA 10 Snubble inside of your collection. Fantastic. But does anyone really care? So I realize now it's more important to have cars that people actually want. So cars that are rare and cars that people actually want. That's really important. You can't simply just have a rare card. It has to actually be a desirable card. So that's a fantastic lesson. Next question, we have Jackson who asks, Hey Jake, what does your everyday schedule look like? How much time do you spend at your day job, doing YouTube work and whatever else? Thanks for keeping up the great work. Yeah, so my average day would probably look like I wake up at seven, I take my dog for a walk, I'll eat breakfast, I'll go into work by eight, I'll leave work by 5 p.m., I'll eat dinner, um, start recording a video around 7 p.m. like tonight, and I'll probably have it edited and uploaded to YouTube by 10, 11 p.m. at night. I'll go to bed and repeat. I don't do a video every day, so on days when I don't have a video, I'll be answering questions on Instagram, uh, writing letters to people, mailing stuff out, shipping eBay orders, going to the gym, playing video games, whatever else that I have laying around in terms of things to do. Uh, next up, we have Solid Air and Pokemon who asks, with the new sets coming out such as Evolving Skies and Celebrations, what will people with tight wallet do? Should Evolving Skies or Celebrations be their number one priority? That's a fantastic question. And one that I think a lot of people should be asking is because these are actual physical products that you have to spend money on. As much as I enjoy Pokemon card collecting as a hobby, I recognize that Pokemon card collecting is not free. There is a gate to it and that gate is you have to spend money. You can't collect Pokemon cards without a budget. So definitely uh, pick one or the other if you are on a tight budget. Evolving Skies and Celebrations are both really fantastic. I can't pick one or over the other. It really comes down to you. Which one do you prefer? You know the whole entire Celebration set list. It exists. We know every single card inside of Celebration. So is that something that you're going to be excited about? Evolving Skies is just right around the corner and the set list in Evolving Skies is fantastic as well. Evolving Skies might as well be a second Celebration. They're both so fantastic. So it really comes down to which do you prefer. There's no Eevee inside of Celebration. So if you're an Eevee fan, maybe go for Evolving Skies. If you're a Rayquaza fan, maybe go for Evolving Skies. Although there is a Rayquaza inside of Celebrations as well. So it really comes down to who you are as collector. There might be a product that is better for you. It really comes down to what you prefer. With Celebrations, there's definitely a lower number of quantity in terms of packs that you can really open. So it really comes down to preference. There's no right or wrong answer when it comes to picking Evolving Skies or Celebrations. They're both really fantastic. Uh, next up, we have Keros Elite who asks, do you think the entire set of Amazing Rares will increase in value? With no sign of them getting printed elsewhere, they seem to be another fantastic subset. Uh, yeah, all of the Amazing Rares are really fantastic. Really cool cards all fantastic Pokemon, a really cool looking set. Here's the thing though, they're not that rare. Oh my goodness. The amazing rares are such easy pulls. When I was opening up Vivid Voltage booster boxes, I remember I was getting an average of two to three amazing rares 
in just about all of my booster boxes. I think it was that common. So the amazing rares are not hard pull, and I've noticed that there's just a ton of them out there. So can they go up in value? They can, but it's gonna take some time. There's just so many of them out there. The market really has to have a lot of time to pretty much consume the extra supply of amazing rares out there. And I don't know how long that's gonna take. It really depends. If the hobby continues to expand, and if the hobby continues to take in more and more collector, that might happen sooner, but I think it's gonna take some time before the amazing rares really catch up in terms of value. They're fantastic cards, and they're very affordable right now, so if they're a set that you want to collect, go ahead and pick them up because they're very affordable right now. Next up, we have Sergio who asks, outside of the TCG, what other items would you recommend picking up for the 25th anniversary? That's a really tricky one. When it comes to Pokemon collectibles, there's currently two main categories and pretty much everything else is a wash. The two main categories are Pokemon cards and sealed Pokemon video games. That's pretty much it. If you want Pokemon games, go ahead and collect those. If you want Pokemon cards, you can collect those. Outside of that, you're gonna be collecting things because you enjoy them, not because they're really gonna have a lot of high growth potential. Things like plushies and stuff like that, they do gain some value. There are some really rare plushies out there, but you're talking about a very niche market. Most people don't collect anything outside of the cards or the video game. So those are the two main criteria when it comes to collecting Pokemon. Next up, we have Kat who asks, how do you store your top loaders? Ideally, I want to put them in a binder or some sort of display like my other cards. So there are binders that are made specifically for top loaded cards. They exist. I have a link down in the description if you'd like to look at an example of a top loader binder. They contain each page has four slots rather than nine. So it's a little bit more tight but they do exist if you want to keep your top loaders inside of binders, those products are available. Most of my top loaders, I usually just keep inside of a storage box. I can flip through them very easily. I do have a couple inside of binders. They're considered display pieces. These are cars that I would never plan on grading for whatever reason. It might not be worth it. They might have some kind of error or blemish that I don't think make it worth it for them to be graded, but they're still cool cars that I want to be uh, shown off. So the binders are a fantastic way to do that for top loaded cards. Next up, we have Jazz who asks, what do you think about signed graded cards? Do you think they could be a good investment or not? This is a super heated uh, discussion right now. I know the whole entire conversation with Frosted Caribou and Gary, although that got a little bit derailed. Uh, from my understanding, the gist of it is that 95% of the time, if a collectible is signed or autographed, it usually raises the value of the collectible. Now that's not always the case. There is still a lot of context involved. There are people out there that prefer cards without the autograph. They don't value the signature. And I think that's actually okay. It really comes down to preference. So for example, someone like Misuhiro Rita or Ken Sugimori, uh, their signature might not be valuable to someone because that person doesn't really understand the artist. They don't know the artist. They don't know who Ken Sugimori is. They don't know who Misuhiro Rita is. And even if they did, they don't know who these artists are as people. So that might be the reason why they don't value the signature that much. The signature can be extremely valuable from one collector to the next. It just really depends on who that collector is. For example, I really value the signature of an artist like Koki Saito, just because Koki Saito has done a lot of the Pikachu promo cards that I've grown to love. Another artist that I really value the signature of is Naoki Saito, but that's because I actually know Naoki Saito, not as a personal friend or anything like that, but he, Naoki Saito has a YouTube channel, so I watch a lot of his videos, so I actually know who he is as a person compared to someone like Mr. Hiro Rita or Ken Sukumori, who's a little bit more mysterious to me, so it's hard for me to really value their signature because I don't really know who they are as a person compared to their art. So it's personal preference 
preference, but in general, I would say an autograph card tends to hold a little bit more value compared to a non-autograph card, just because they're a little bit more rare, but it does vary from one collector to the next, which card they would value. Next up, we have Selena who asks, hey Jake, are there any cards specifically that you would automatically pull the trigger or grade regardless of condition? First edition base set Charizard. If you have a first edition base set Charizard, you better grade that card regardless if it's in the worst condition or not. It doesn't matter what condition that card is in, you better grade it. I'm not gonna buy a first edition base set Charizard if it's ungraded, simple as that. Most people are gonna assume it's a fake because if you have one, why wouldn't it be graded is the question right now. No, in general, I don't assume you're gonna have a first edition base set Charizard. I think if a card is worth over $100 right now, ungraded, raw, like it's already worth $100, you should probably grade it. That card would just be such a hassle to evaluate and sell or trade later on if it's ungraded. It just saves you so much hassle having it already graded. Next up, we have Gabernuki who asked, do you think that booster boxes always increase in price after a certain amount of time? For example, is it a guarantee that a box of shiny star V or blue sky will increase in price? Thanks. There's absolutely no guarantee that anything will increase in value. That's something that no one can guarantee. That's not really possible. You know, I can tell you things like, the trend is that after five years, this is how much value a booster box tends to increase by. I can show you stuff like that, but there's no guarantee that anything will ever increase in value. And personally, I like these products as collectibles, so I don't really mind if they increase in value or not. The fact that they increase in value is a nicety rather than a must have. So it's really up to you, but there's always gonna be risk. There's always gonna be risk. You just don't know for sure. There's no guarantee that they will increase in value. Next up, we have Andrew Stacks who asks, how long after a set has been released is the best time to buy singles to complete a set? Usually one year is a good time frame. After one year, the singles usually bottom out in terms of prices. That doesn't mean they're gonna start climbing after one year, but after one year, it's probably a safe bet that it's a good time to start buying singles. Uh, we have Brandon who asks, hi Jake, are you excited for celebrations? Will you be buying products to keep sealed as well as to open? And how do I know which items to hold on to? That's a super tricky question. I am super excited for Celebration. It looks to be a fun set. I'm definitely gonna buy some products and open quite a few of them on the channel. Uh, which ones are the best one to keep sealed? It's really hard to say so early on. I think the most likely product that you should keep sealed is probably gonna be the figure collection, the premium figure collection with the fat Pikachu inside of it is probably the one that I would keep sealed just because it's gonna be the most tricky one to reprint. To reprint that whole entire gargantuan box would be such a hassle if the Pokemon company were to reprint Celebrations, and I'm so confident they will. The Pokemon company will reprint Celebrations if it sells out. Why wouldn't they? It's like free money. The figure collection is the most complex to reprint, so I think they'll opt to reprint some of the other products before they reprint the figure collection. That one is usually a good one. Another one is the collector's chest. The collector's chest, as far as I know, have never ever been reprinted. So that's another cool one that you can uh, confidently keep sealed, I think. Next up, we have Johnny Tightlips who asks, why is CP6 Evolutions Japanese skyrocketing in price while English Evolutions, especially base Charizard reprint plummeting in value. Really comes down to supply on that one. There's just so much XY Evolutions out there. And I'm not talking about the sealed products. The sealed products of XY Evolutions are definitely a little bit more tricky to find, but there is a ton of open Celebrations products out there. If you're looking for an XY Evolutions Charizard, there's so many of them available on the open market. CP6 is a completely different story. CP6 Charizard is super rare. It's just hard to find. So it really comes down to the supply. There's just very little CP6 Charizard and a ton of XY Evolutions Charizard. Simple as that. Uh, next up we have 
Jax who asks, what is the best undervalue investment in the hobby right now? No idea, dude. That's super hard to answer. A big part of it is that the market is super honed in right now. Everyone is just so ready to pick up on every single detail right now. If there's anything that's even a little bit underrated, if there's news on a brand new card, there's already a thousand people that already have the knowledge and are already picking for these cards. So it's really hard to pick out what some of the best investments are, are right now. There's very little products out there that I would say is underrated just because so many people are so ready to pick up on anything that's even remotely undervalued right now. Next up, we have Sleep, Eat, Breathe Music who asks, hey Jake, what's your favorite position? My favorite position is definitely support. I'll play uh, jungler every now and again and some top if those are available, but I usually main support. I've reached platinum multiple times. I've tried to make the climb to diamond, uh, have never made it to diamond, got super close a couple of times, and I pretty much stopped playing a couple of years ago. Next up, we have William Briggs who asks, investing and money aside, what's your favorite Pokemon product of 2021? It can be released or has yet to be released. I'm gonna pick something that's been released. This was really hard to say something's my favorite product if it hasn't been released yet because I haven't held it in my hand. So it's hard for me to say it's my favorite. Uh, my favorite one that has been released so far has to be the Melk Karn Marnie Premium Collection Box. That thing is super cool. That is definitely one of the coolest Pokemon card product that has been released in English in so long. I'm super glad that it came to English and I'm really happy to have it inside of my collection. I gave away one of the Melk Karn uh, a couple weeks ago. Really, really cool product. And if you don't have one inside of your collection, I think it's a cool pickup. It's a really unique product. And I hope it's something that they continue to do uh, down the line. They definitely have the potential to do more of them. So I'm really looking forward to it. It's such a cool product. All right, everybody, that's the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. This is not going to be the only AMA I'm gonna do. Just because you guys asked so many fantastic questions, I'm gonna try to pick even more questions to answer next time and hopefully we can get through even more. If I don't answer your questions in video, I'm gonna be doing my best diligence to at least reply to you and give you an answer one way or another. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.